REL Pacific is one of 10 regional educational laboratories often referred to as RELs, which are funded by the U.S. Department of Education's Institute of Education Sciences. All educators, whatever their role, use data to inform their decisions. In this video, we'll discuss how educators can use data more effectively using five key steps taken from REL Pacific's Five Steps for Structuring Data-Informed Conversations and Action in Education to approach data conversations and data-based decision-making. More information on each step, including sample questions and other resources, can be found in the guide, available at the following link. Data can enable policymakers to make objective decisions about education systems and provide them with information on program effectiveness. Data can also provide teachers and administrators with information on student learning to influence instruction, programming, and professional learning, and can motivate and engage students by providing them with data on their progress. To support educators in effectively using available data, REL Pacific has identified five research-based steps to facilitating data-informed conversations that can help lead to strategic decision-making, setting the stage, examining the data, understanding the findings, developing an action plan, and monitoring progress and measuring success. Setting the stage involves identifying the research question to be addressed, the information required to answer it, and the feasibility of accessing that information and collecting the data to be examined. Examining the data means looking for patterns and making initial observations, as well as exploring any limitations in the data. Understanding the findings is a step in which driving factors are identified in the data using observations and key challenges are discussed with the data team. Developing an action plan begins with setting short and long-term goals and identifying key stakeholders in the research. Monitoring progress and measuring success are ways of keeping the action plan on track and determining whether the goal has been reached. Setting the stage. During this step, you must first identify the question to be addressed, the information needed to address it, and the feasibility of accessing the information. If data are not readily available, you will need to collect data during this step. You can do this by crafting a clear research question that enables data-informed conversations. The question may be very broad to start with, but narrowing the question makes identifying and interpreting data clearer and easier. For example, a data team might begin with the question, what do the data reveal about how middle school students perform in math classes? But further narrow the question to, what percentage of middle school students score at or above proficiency on standardized math achievement tests? Identify sources of data to answer the research question. These may include standardized test results, as in our middle school example. For other questions, sources of data might include enrollment information or parent surveys. Identify multiple sources of raw or analyzed data that are appropriate for the research question. Especially when beginning data conversations on an issue of interest, it can be helpful to focus on data that have already been collected and are readily available. A lack of adequate or reliable data can inform recommendations for future data collection, even if the questions cannot yet be answered. Once you've identified your data sources, it's time to either collect or access, in the case of available data, the data needed to answer your proposed research question. Data should be accurate and reliable and help address or narrow your research question. Examining the data. In this step, you'll record your initial observations of the data, paying close attention to any patterns that may arise, and then explore any limitations in the data. Observations of the data will ideally focus on a single source, free of any outside inferences or assumptions, and able to address your initial question. Before examining data, limitations in the data should be discussed with the data team. In our middle school math example, if standardized math tests are your identified data source, but are only administered in grades 6 and 8, it will be difficult to fully determine the percentage of middle school students who score at or above proficiency on standardized math tests. This limitation may instead prompt you to further narrow your research question to use available data as benchmarks for achievement at the start and end of middle school. After examining the data, note any patterns that arise, and if possible, begin characterizing findings as strengths or indicators of success and challenges or issues to be addressed. When you review the same data across different points in time, patterns may become apparent. 
These patterns might be expected, for example, a decline in middle school math achievement data when students shift to more challenging content, or surprising, for example, an increase in achievement data during the same time frame. If possible, compare different sources of data and look into further research that may examine any causal relationships of interest. Understanding the findings. Use observations of the data to identify driving factors in the data and discuss key challenges with the data team. Identify a few actionable, high-priority challenges to focus on for action planning, but keep in mind the broader context of the team's ultimate goal. For example, if you discover a drop in standardized math scores from the beginning to the end of middle school, you might choose to provide additional math supports to students in 7th and 8th grade. Identify driving factors while recognizing limitations, uncertainty, and possible biases. As a simple exercise with your data team, ask why questions, followed by because responses to explore driving factors, uncertainty, and biases. For example, asking why math scores decline between sixth and eighth grade could reveal a driving factor related to a new math curriculum or shift in content in seventh grade. Developing an action plan. Action plans help you set goals and identify stakeholders to address the challenges and build on the successes you've identified by examining your data. Create a SMART plan, one that is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely, that includes short-term objectives and a long-term goal. Brainstorm potential strategies to achieve these goals, then plan for the amount of time and resources you will need. Monitoring progress and measuring success. Keep the action plan on track and determine whether your data team's goal has been reached. Regularly check in with other data team members to identify challenges and celebrate successes. If the action plan gets off track because of unexpected challenges, such as turnover of key staff, determine the steps you need to take to get the plan back on track and move forward. Examine the effectiveness of your action plan using the same data used to identify challenges and successes. When your action plan has been implemented for an appropriate period of time, review your new data. In our example, standardized math test scores for eighth graders to examine any impacts. These five steps can be facilitated by a data team. Data teams are groups of individuals dedicated to data inquiry and the outcomes it supports. Although data teams aren't required for data-informed conversations, a data team can make it easier to organize, manage, and reflect on data discussions. Data teams can be diverse or can comprise individuals with similar roles, but ideally, all members will enrich and strengthen both the process and the results of data-informed conversations. Data teams are helpful in identifying sources of information or appropriate sources of data, looking into studies beyond the scope of the research question, narrowing the focus of the research to actionable challenges, keeping the action plan on track and monitoring its progress, assessing the effectiveness of an action plan. All educators, whatever their role, collect and use data in their everyday practice. Using data strategically to guide decisions and actions in education can have a positive effect for both educators and students. To learn more about the work of REL Pacific at McRell International, visit ies.ed.gov slash NCEE slash EdLabs slash Regions slash Pacific. Access five steps for structuring data-informed conversations and action in education at the following link.